Welcome back. I'm playing Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. We'll get started on our next multiplayer matchup. We're going to be doing the Field of Skulls, Exterminatus, at 1,500 points. Uh, I'm playing as the Adeptus Aurortas, and our opponent's playing as the Blood Angels. It's at 1,500 points. 80-point uh, tar uh, target with unlimited turns. So I'm going to play around and kind of go with a melee build here. I think it should work out pretty well against uh, the Space Marines, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to get our units deployed here in a second. And what we end up having here is the Cannonists. I have uh, got two Hospitals, one of which is going to be our HQ unit. The Cannonists will hopefully do some good damage and then also be able to debuff the enemy units. Uh, I did give her the Plasma Pistol. I've got uh, four or five Celestian Sacrosaints and four Sisters Repentia. I'm going to put them into the Rhinos. Hopefully I can get them into combat and then also use their smoke ability in case he ends up having... Uh, a lot of ranged units to try to get them to where they need to be. Now, unfortunately, I can't fit anybody else in here. I don't really like how this first map is set up because it definitely causes a lot of congestion of your units. So I'm just kind of splitting them up into two battle groups here, uh, one on each side. Hopefully I can then use the uh, Hospitaller to not only heal but also to get additional uh, attacks here. And then what I'm worried about is if I go towards the center, I think he's just going to be able to snipe me if he has range units. So I'm actually going to kind of shift to the right side here. And my thought is that if I can kind of get him off center a little bit, then I should hopefully be able to divide and conquer and do a bunch of damage to him. And then if I can kind of consolidate my forces and come as a wave, then I should be able to do more damage and then hopefully be able to also maximize the uh, benefit of the smoke grenades. And just trying to pull guys together here. So if I do get end, if I end up getting jumped by assault marines, I should be safe. But I don't think anybody's close enough that they should be able to do that. And then I had the extra points. So I gave her the plasma pistol. And still can't see anybody, so it's like, all right, well, let's start moving guys up then. Because I'm not quite sure where the enemy forces are, since we haven't seen each other yet. So it's like I don't want to totally overextend myself and leave for easy attacks. We seek his enemies. What is your will? We seek his enemies. Because I don't know if he's going to have hell blasters, and what enemies. I don't want to happen is for him to be able to yeah. snipe these rhinos down so and kill everybody that's inside the transport. Because if that happens. For eternity. That's uh, going to be a major loss for us. I also got to keep these hospitals protected so they don't end up getting killed either. With haste. I walk in haste. Now I'm just kind of moving the cannons around so she can use her uh, abilities to help tank everybody else here. And hopefully keep him alive because I assume he's going to be engaging me in this next turn. And it's like, well, if that's the case, we might as well be popping some smoke here, too, to try to get as much defense as we can until we're ready to engage the enemy. And his tanks are finally making an approach. Now, the interesting thing is I didn't see him use his... Uh, Increased movement ability with the Predator, so I don't know if he did that on the first turn to get him up and it's just on cooldown still, or what's going on there. But it looks like he's got the aggressors. Now, thankfully, he's got the Boltstorm Gauntlets, so that generally means they're going to suck at uh, melee, or at range. Now, they may be able to mess me up. Um, I like my Sisters of Repentia aren't going to be able to charge at them. But the Boltstorm don't have much for armor piercing. So they shouldn't be able to suppress me too bad. And then he's using his Fragstorm grenade launchers on my sisters. And he's attacking units that have a ton of health, so he's barely doing any damage. And then he's buffing up the uh, Predator here. So now it's like, oh, he's put these guys over here. I should pretty easily be able to move these rhinos around and then use my sister's Repentia to uh, be able to get attacks. And now I'm trying to figure out where can my Hospitaller go. 
to be able to get the additional attack to my sister's Repentia so he'll be able to get some kills. Now I thought that if I moved... I See, I'm looking at the numbers here and I'm not really thinking this through very well. So what I did is I was like, well, we'll move you over here. You should be out of range for his overwatch and you have the smoke. One, he's got the accuracy boost, he's got the damage boost, and she's not in the smoke. So that was just a shitty uh, thought process all around. Whereas if that would have attacked the rhino, there would have been minimal damage dealt to it. And then I would have an additional attack. So that was definitely a mistake on my part. But it's like, alright, well, we get a rear attack into the Predator, I should almost kill him. And it's like, yep, he's almost one-shotted there. And it's like, do I lock you in to get melee, or do I run you away? Because I assume this Predator is going to blow up, and it's like, let's just run you away since they have no armor and they suffer increased damage after they use that charge attack. And now it's like, well, I can easily kill this Predator, obviously. But maybe I want to actually come over and actually attack this Tech Marine. Because I should be able to snipe this, and that would take out his command unit. And he now won't be able to heal anybody else. So it's like, that was more important to me. And I felt, well, I can probably actually kill this Predator with the uh, Celestians here. And if not, I could probably kill him with this other Rhino. But now it's like, I'm pretty sure... I should be able to do the same thing on the other side here. So it's like, how far can I move you where they'll still get attacks? And I'm not sure where his overwatch is, so it's like, let's just attack, move these ladies over here. Because they can definitely tank the hit a lot better than my hospitaler can. Because now I'm getting all gun shy, given that the other one's already died. It's like, yep, I should get this kill. And I do. So it's like, alright, that Predator's down. And now it's time to take out this other Predator. Even with the bonuses, it should still be pretty easy to get the kill. So it's like, let's move you here. And then they got the extra attack, so it's like, well, that's going to be dead then. And then with that exploding, we might as well move those ones over here. And it's like, alright, well, we'll just lock everybody down here. It's like I could unlock the other sister, or unload the other sisters, but there's really no reason to do that right now. So now I just need to keep my hospital there alive. So it's like, yeah, I can charge into there, but again, I don't want to end up getting suppressed. So let's just move you straight ahead. But without their armor piercing, I'm not sure it would have even made a difference. But again, why chance it at this point in time? Because now I've done significant damage to most of his forces. And it's like, do I want to attack or do I not? What I don't want is for that Dreadnought, Librarian Dreadnought, to come over here and take out my Cannonist, because he could definitely kill her. So it's like, let's do this, take away one of his AP, and then I guess we'll, I'm like, do I move over one or not? And I'm not quite sure what he has for the rest of his forces here, because I know this is not the equivalent of 51% uh, of his forces, so he still has guys somewhere else. So I'll keep her back, and they end up using the Oath of Protection to give them additional armor and additional health, since the aggressors will have to uh, fight them in melee, unless they're going to give me free attacks, which is pretty unlikely. And then I see that he went with the Intercessors here, and every, I think everybody knows there I hate those units. I just don't think they ever pay off well. And then with all these buffs from those sisters, he's like not even able to do damage to them right now. So he's getting pretty frustrated with everything. Because it's like they just got attacked by... Oh, he's got more aggressors over there. Uh, he just got attacked by all these other units and he barely did any damage. So it's like this is why you want to stack your buffs. We serve. It's like, well... I'm not going to be able to get them to attack the other guy, so we might as well run you down here and get this kill. And then she's still alive. 
Now, I ended up attacking the aggressors. I think I should have attacked the Librarian Dreadnought instead, but I wasn't quite sure what the situation was, and I wanted them to die. And then it's like, do I want to use these sisters to attack the aggressors, or do I want to just keep focusing on this Librarian Dreadnought? I just couldn't quite decide what I wanted to do here. For Catherine, for eternity. It's like, well, I, I can't make up my mind, so I do know I want to kill these aggressors. So I don't think there's any situation where I wouldn't want her to attack there. And then when I saw that she didn't get the kill, I attacked with them. So I'd much rather the Sacred Saints get attacked than uh, my other units. So it's like, let's get the heal here. Now they're almost back to full health. And it's like, yeah, that's not worth any points here. It's like, let's send these two over here to get the kill here, assuming they land their attacks, which they did. And then again, pull in the cannonist back, because I don't want her to get uh, shot up. And it's like, these, these sisters are too far away to be able to get into battle, so we'll just run them forward. And then it's the, we're back to the situation. Do I kill the aggressors or do I kill the dreadnought? And I feel like, well, if I kill the dreadnought, it should explode. But if it explodes, it's going to kill everything else. And it's not going to be able to do a ton of damage. So I ended up attacking the aggressors. I think if I did it again, I would have gone and killed the dreadnought, though. Because one, it's his... Uh, HQ leader right now, so with every unit I'm killing, I'm giving him command points to be able to strafe me, because that would allow him to easily annihilate my uh, Sisters of Repentia by using that ability. Because I know he's getting a bunch of points for doing that. And as I was thinking about that more, I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to kill this guy. So I thought, well, maybe... If I run everybody down here and I get rear attacks with the Sisters of Repentium, I didn't know. I'm like, maybe that will be able to one-shot a Dreadnought? I'm not quite sure. And they almost did. And I'm like, oh, zero to zero times eight. I'm like, well, that's probably not going to do anything for me. But I was pretty annoyed with myself that I had done that. What is your will? We serve. Now, what I'm not quite sure about is they got a rear attack like that, so why did the Librarian Dreadnought get to attack them back? I don't know why that occurred, and I've noticed that's happened several times with the Sisters Repentia. Um, so it's like, well, let's just pull them back here, because if the Dreadnought melees anybody, it should get counterattacked and hopefully killed. And we don't want them to blow up on the Sisters here. But it's like, oh yeah, he can easily kill whoever he hits there, so I guess they're not going to get a counterattack. You know, it's like he's got the aggressor, so he's like, well, I guess I'll just run down in melee. And then I see, oh, he's got intercessors, 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 so he's got all these points. It's like, man, if only he had gone with jump infantry instead, he would have been able to damage all my units, but now he's stuck having these attacks here. And it's like, okay, now use three units there and you killed one unit we serve. it's like well we might as well run these ones we around these here points. to get the rear attack I don't quite have enough momentum here to get to three but now I do and I'm like oh, does that do damage across or was it just range and it's 20 across with 20% increased damage with armor piercing so I'm like oh that's pretty beautiful then so then I attack here kill that guy brings me up to 77% and I'm like well I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be able to one shot these guys here but with the uh, cannonist here she should be able to do quite a bit of damage but unfortunately she was not able to get the kill I thought she was gonna be able to one shot one of these guys each and it's like, well, let's just do attack again. And that was a big overkill. And well, I'm just trying to decide, do I run around and just knock most of these guys down uh, with trying not to kill them to just maximize the uh, 
killing it, it's like, nah, that would be kind of bad for him. Just kill this guy and bring the game to an end. So, that's what I ended up doing. So, uh, nice win. Um, unfortunately, you know, kind of a awkward for selection. This player did state that he was a new player, so I don't know if you'll see this video or not, but I thought I would uh, upload it since I said if he came over to my channel I would do that for him just to give him some feedback. So he went with the aggressors. Um, they're not bad units. I think if you're going to use the aggressors you need to give them the flamestorm gauntlets though because that bolt storm gauntlet just doesn't do anything, doesn't give you any benefits, it doesn't suppress enough. Um, it's really only good against Tyranids when they're going to be using their leap and charge abilities on you. Um, so if you're not going to be playing Tyranids you're going to want the Flamestorm Gauntlets because by their uh, Hail of Fire ability they can do a ton of damage and then if that's on cooldown then you can melee. So that's how you get the maximum benefit out of that. If you're going to use the Frag Storm uh, can, uh, Grenade Launcher or whatever it's called, then you're going to need to um, use it on low armored units. So you are attacking my Sacred Saints, which end up having like six or seven armor, even more if they're using their abilities. And so it was doing like no damage. And then on top of that, unlike other uh, grenade launchers in this game, those ones have an actual accuracy towards them. So then they have evasion bonuses because they were in the smoke, which is why those grenade launchers, even though you did several attacks, did like 12 damage total to each unit in the uh, squad there. So it just didn't make any, um, didn't really do anything for you. I know you want to just launch those attacks so you can start getting them off. But uh, once you saw like the Sisters of Repentia, you should have thought, I need to use those grenades on the Sisters Repentia to drop them because they were by far the most dangerous unit on the field at this point in time. Um, the Intercessors there, you know, I just don't think they make a lot of sense. You spent a lot of points on them and they're the same amount of points that you'd spend on Assault Marines and Assault Marines would have been able to damage or kill anything that I brought on this uh, field whereas those Intercessors, once they get into melee with the Sacred Saints, they just are ineffective at that point in time. Yeah, I, I mean, you can do some damage as you did to the Sisters uh, when you use their uh, ability to increase the range stability and everything, but the bolter damage it doesn't have high enough armor piercing that would do significant damage to the uh, Sanker Saints there, so they would just be able to run around, keep flanking you, get all those kills, and then as you keep doing more and more damage to the Sisters of Battle, then they end up getting uh, evasion and so then your ranged accuracy falls even further. Uh, the Librarian Dreadnought's not a bad idea. You know, if you're not in combat, you could keep them in the Overwatch, but I think if you would have given yourself a little bonus AP, or not AP, uh, HP, that could have been beneficial. And then using the command points to uh, be able to, because I know you for sure would have had at least one command point, and you could have ran that Storm Raven down and taken out my uh, Sister's Repentia. Um, and so that would have been how I would also have benefited. Uh, I think you would have benefited. Uh, the play with the predators definitely a nice idea there unfortunately you got just a little bit close to the rhinos that could happen to anybody um, but that's one of the main things you got to be careful of when you're fighting fighting the sisters of battle is they you, you can't tell what's in the uh, transports but it's frequently the sisters uh, repentia because they don't have a lot of armor and then the, when you unload them they can get into combat like you could see and then because their chain swords are they're the single most dangerous unit in the whole game because those chain Swords do massive damage and they have massive armor piercing. So, they, as you could see, they could almost one shot your tanks and they can one shot your command units. So I was able to easily snipe down that tech marine. And then if you have a hospital around them, they get two attacks. So, it just rapidly gets out of control. So, um, that would be my feedback for you on this matchup. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please give my channel a like and subscribe. Encourage me to post more content for you. Have a great day.